About seven minutes before its final destruction, almost an hour after the plane hit, molten metal was seen coming out of the northeast corner near the 80th floor. The red-yellow metal poured from the tower along with a shower of sparks and looked like steel in a foundry. And there were many eyewitnesses that described molten steel. You'd get down below and you'd see molten steel. Molten steel running down the channel rails. Later, we learned of very small spheres of iron found all through the dust. That iron must have been molten, allowing surface tension to pull it into those spheres. NASA took photos indicating very high temperatures days after the event, and Firewise professors were perplexed by melting of steel beams. And so we have direct video evidence, eyewitness accounts, forensic evidence, photographic evidence, and tangible evidence all corroborating temperatures high enough to melt steel. The media told us, the intense fire more than the impact caused the towers to collapse. It melted the structural steel. But there's a problem. Office and open-air jet fuel fires cannot melt steel. The National Institute of Standards and Technology said that the maximum air temperatures was about 1,800 degrees or 1,000 degrees colder than what's needed to melt steel. So what can melt steel and explain all the evidence? Independent scientists began to piece that evidence together, and they suggested some type of thermitic material must have been used as part of the tower's demolition. Thermite is a mix of iron oxide and aluminum, and thermate is a mix of thermite, barium nitrate, and sulfur. But NIST ignored much of the evidence of molten iron or steel. They provided their own theory for that yellow metal pouring from the tower. NIST understood that molten aluminum is silver, not red-yellow. So NIST developed a theory to explain the color issue, stating, The molten metal was very likely mixed with large amount of hot, partially burned solid organic materials, such as furniture, carpet, partitions, and computers, which can display an orange glow, much like the logs burning in a fireplace. But there's a problem. Office materials like furniture, carpet, partitions, and computers are less dense and won't mix. They'll float on molten aluminum, like this coin on liquid mercury, and then burn off at those temperatures. And steel at those temperatures won't melt and would sink, and therefore won't mix with the molten aluminum. NIST never conducted any experiments to confirm their theory, but others did. Dr. Stephen Jones proved the NIST molten aluminum and furniture mix theory wrong. Then, an independent peer-reviewed report was published which found explosive red-gray chips all through the dust and positively identified as nanothermite or superthermite. 